if you watch a lot of my freestyle videos, you probably notice that they all look the same. Well, they aren't all exactly the same, but they're, they're close to the same. They have a lot of the same characteristics. Today, you're going to find out why. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and like I said today, I'm going to talk about why most of my freestyle videos have some of the same feel. I don't think it's a bad thing, right? So as freestyle FPV pilots, we tend to get into this, this I'm not going to call it a rut, but we're going to get into this rhythm where there's some tricks that we really incorporate and there's some that we really don't. Some of that's based on our own personal style prefer preferences and some of that is based on the area which we fly. Now I fly a lot of the same area because where I live, there's just not a lot of opportunity to fly. It's not legal in most places. Uh, there is a lot of hassle about it. So I come out to a fairly safe place when I wanna fly, but that means that it's the same place nearly every time. I can look for a lot of other spots, but then I'd be looking for spots more than I am flying and I'd never learn anything. So I keep coming out here to fly. But that also means that my style is really influenced by the landscape. And it's a flat area. So what do you do in a flat area? You do snappy fun tricks because cruising can only get you so far. So today I'm gonna to show you three of my favorite tricks to incorporate into my freestyle lines. Some stuff that's really signature to how I fly. And like I said, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've probably noticed them. You've probably yelled at your TV or phone screen at me to stop doing them <laughs> that they happens so much in my style, but that's my style. It's incorporated, it's Bacon Ninja's flight style. And that's why I think that if you watch one of my videos out of a lineup and you've ever seen me fly before, you could probably pick me out of a lineup because of these things. So I'm just gonna skip on to showing you how to do them. And the three things we're gonna cover today are yaw spins. Oh, I must flip the camera off. I, I need to think about which fingers I use. Inverted yaw spins, something definitely signature to me. I do them a lot. A uh, juicy flick that ends in a double roll, or a juicy roll as I like to call it, juicy double roll. Uh, and yaw slides, because I do a lot of yaw slides. And I think a lot of pilots forget about the power of the yaw axis, because they just don't fly flat enough spots. So those are the three things we're going to take a look at today. And we're going to start with inverted yaw spins. All right, let's learn inverted yaw spins. Yaw spins. So the inverted yaw spin starts with getting inverted obviously but it looks like this when it's all put together you go upside down get inverted you yaw around and then you come out of it but the first step obviously getting inverted and i like to get inverted by doing a half turn or a half roll like that so that's the way you start out with it you learn at first to do your half roll you just do a lot of practice getting your half roll to lock the horizon and then rolling back out of it. Once you can get that, and you've got the horizon fairly flat and you're comfortable hanging there for a little bit, obviously get some air first. That way you uh, don't immediately plow into the ground. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You saw I kind of like soften the edges of that roll a little bit. But anyway, once you get that down, pay attention to the sticks on this one, you roll, you push the yaw and then you roll again. So you basically just add a yaw move in the middle of that segmented roll. And you can make that yaw as long as you want it to be. I prefer a, a short, quick one. That was kind of sloppy because I'm thinking about it too hard. Eventually you stop thinking about the individual movements and you just put them all together. But, but that's what it should look like. now. The more camera angle you have, the more roll you have to mix in to get your roll flat during the yaw spin. I fly a really short 15 degree camera angle, so mine's not that much at all. But if you're doing like 35 degrees, you may have to add a significant amount of roll to get that right. But yeah, it just starts out with learning how to invert and hang in a half roll. And good news, the inverted yaw spin was probably the hardest one that I'm going to do today. The other ones are really straightforward. In fact, one of them is just a combination trick and the other one's just reminding you to use your left stick. Uh, so don't get too intimidated. Uh, 
But the next thing we're going to take a look at is the, the Juicy Double Roll, which is a Juicy Flick that incorporates a double roll exit. Um, I got into this because I kind of like the travel of a Juicy Flick, but getting out of it felt... I wanted a more abrupt way to get out of it, if that makes sense. Like, there are points in my flight style where I go into smooth movement, but then I like to just throw you off with a, a sharp movement as well. So you go into a nice juicy flick, you get a little terror from the double roll, and then I just snap right out of the double roll into usually a smooth yaw slide because I like to end it with smoothness. I like to start with smooth and end with smooth and give you a lot of chaos in between to jumble your brain a little bit. Uh, so let's take a look at the juicy double roll. And another staple of my style is the juicy double roll which is a combination trick where you combine a juicy flick and a double roll it looks like this and then i like to throw the yaw slide on that at the end so it's really just a juicy flick and instead of rolling halfway out of the juicy flick you do a double roll at the end and in order to get this one down you just start with a juicy flick which you know, you can half roll out and yaw out of. That was kind of sloppy. I don't do them normal very often, but a juicy flick is just a flip, a half roll, and a turn. So rather than do that, you just keep the roll stick pinned until a double roll comes out, and then you yaw out of it. So yeah, juicy flick, double roll, yaw slide. And you can do that over an object like this. And I like to yaw slide into a rewind there at the end of it. But yeah, start with a juicy flick. And then you just add the double roll. So keep it pinned a little longer. Now the important thing is that you need enough room for the double roll. Because you will travel a good distance while that roll is happening. So I kind of throw the quad a little up high. Like I, I throw the juicy flick toward the air a tad so that the double roll happens in plenty of air to accomplish it. But the real key to this trick, it's not so much that it's difficult because it's really not. The real key is snapping out of the roll. Like you can gracefully come out into a yaw slide. But see how I just ended the roll right in a crispy way? That's what I like about it. Is because you're kind of you're kind of juicy flicking into chaos, but then you suddenly snap out of it and you can flow into something else. Or you could just let it flow right out and you don't have to really snap out of it, but I like the snappiness. And I like to yaw slide like that at the end of them. So there's that, the juicy double roll. Pretty greasy. And last, probably also least, is the yaw slide, which like I said at the beginning of the video is really just reminding you to use your yaw axis. It does exist, pilots. And uh, I'll remind you during the tutorial section, but I do fly with rates that do not include any expo for yaw because I don't need additional expo for y'all in the way that I use it. A lot of this has to do with camera angle. I fly at 15 degrees. If you're flying higher, you might find that you need to do some different things with your rates to do this, or you might find a different way of doing it that works better with a roll mix. But because I fly such a low camera angle, I can get away with just sliding on my yaw axis. So let's take a look at doing some of that. And again, remind you to use the thing. It's it's there, your left thumb appreciates some use other than up and down. Let's check that out. Now this is something I like for transitions and it's called a yaw slide. You just slide on your yaw axis, it's real simple. It's really straightforward. It's super easy, but it makes for nice transitions. See how I did that? I backed into it and then I backed out of it. That's exactly what I like to do. So like, let's do this again. I'm gonna go into a, a vanny roll, which is 
and I change direction with a yaw slide. Or sometimes I rewind a yaw slide. I just like to stay fluid with the yaw axis there. Throw a roll in. And just get a lot of yaw action. I actually have my yaw expo turned to zero. It's the only expo I have at zero on my rates. And I yaw slide a lot. I yaw slide everywhere. <laughs> it's like ice skating with me. I'm always y'all sliding. But I think it's an underused axis for a lot of reasons. A lot of people are into the roll and the pitch, but they kind of forget y'all exist. But that whole sideways y'all slide thing is really nice transition material between tricks. Plus you can get a vanny roll in. Don't forget your yaw axis. That's really what I'm at with this one. You see those yaw slides? I'll slow down a couple of them in post so you can see. It's really just... Snappy yaw movements. And I like to end my momentum. You saw that a second ago. I like to end my momentum like if I'm coming out of this. I like to end it with that sideways bit of y'all roll. In the y'all slide. Really straightforward, but don't forget about your y'all axis. It can do a lot for you. That's all there is to that one. Probably the easiest out of all of them. And that's it. That's three of the basic things that I do in my own personal flight style. And now you can go do them too and d try to be like bacon. But don't actually be like me. It's not not what you want. <laughs> um, I get a lot of flack for this flight style. A lot, actually. I get a lot of, it's too spang, and I get a lot of, it's not proxy enough, um, and I get a lot of, there's no flow. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something. It's your own personal style, and this is my personal style, and for the area where I fly, this is how I enjoy to fly. And it doesn't matter the quad I'm flying. You saw me do some of this with a seven inch. Uh, you've seen me do it with micros. You've seen me do it a lot with five inch drones. I've even done it with a couple of cine whoops. I don't know if I've ever posted that, but this is the style in which I like to fly. Now I can fly really smooth and I can fly really flow and I can fly 100% chaotic spang, but I don't. I like to blend all of these things together that makes it something I enjoy. It's like art. I don't paint stuff that other people want to see. I want to paint stuff that I want to see for my own enjoyment, and if you also enjoy it, then that means we must have something in common, and I appreciate you validating the enjoyment of that for me. If you don't enjoy it, that's fine. Not everybody enjoys every form of art, and that should not be something which we give them any trouble for. It's perfectly fine. I get it. But this is mine. And uh, now I'm gonna just take a couple of packs because I have a few left over after doing all the tutorial packs and incorporate all of it. So I'm gonna go fly and have fun making the style of flight and art that I make. Yeah, let's go do some of that.
And there you have it, that's me, Bacon Ninja in my flight style, using three of the staples that I generally use in my flights, just because they, I'm not gonna say they're uniquely me, but they are a part of me. And there are some other things in there too, and I'm adding things to it all the time that I feel like I wanna add, but you don't have to rush the process. You can learn two tricks and go have fun. You can learn 10 tricks and go have fun. You can learn, learn 40 tricks and go have fun. It really all comes down to where you're gonna fly, how you wanna fly, and what seems fun to you. And this seems fun to me. And I do wanna add things to it, like I said, and I wanna fly other places that are more technically challenging when I find them, but I'll conquer those hurdles when I get there. I'm not opposed to crashing my quad 100 times. It's fine, I'll learn this stuff. I'm gonna take my time and do it because I enjoy the hobby and I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna be here two years from now, five years from now, as long as they don't make drones impossible to own in this country, I will be flying them. Um, so I've got time, I don't have to rush through it. So I can sit back and enjoy doing this the way that I enjoy doing this. And I hope you enjoyed it too. And if you have, feel free to leave a like or subscribe if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it. But until next time, stay greasy and I'll catch you later. So I'm just gonna skip on to showing you how to do them. And the three things we're gonna cover today are yaw spins. Oh, I must flip the camera off. I, I need to think about which fingers I use. <laughs>